listening in, and some of you who listen regularly know about this guy, Andrew Calhoun. He was on the show probably in the last six months, could have been a little bit longer. I didn't look it up, but he, uh, he's played at many places. He's played on this very stage. He and his daughter Casey go around playing. He has a uh, record label that he uh, produces not only his own material, but other people's. He is, uh, according to uh, Katie, who is not here, but she's the one that said he is a renowned uh, punster uh, on Facebook. And he recently did a book, and I think the reason that we've got you here today initially was because you're getting some kind of award. Is that happening tonight? Is that happening today, this weekend? Or has it already happened? Uh, July 20th. That's coming up. At the uh, Woodstock Folk Festival, it's giving me a Lifetime Achievement Award, which, which I'm testing as a promissory note on future projects, I hope. But. Well, you know, that uh, the guy we just had, Dennis Anderson, he's at uh, Woodstock, is in his district. Okay. So, uh, I don't know. Dennis, uh, just so you hear that uh, Andrew Calhoun is going to be up at Woodstock on the 20th, getting an award. So, uh, you might want to turn out the masses and pass out your buttons. Okay. I, know, I don't know if I'm allowed to advocate all this stuff, but we're rolling. <laughs> rolling. So, what's been happening with you, Senor Calhoun? Well, jeez. Uh, <laughs> Kind of building a local life, you know. My dad's getting older and needs me around more. And I'm glad that you're taking care of your dad. I'm looking forward to my kids I'm, taking care of me. I'm, I'm working <laughs> some uh, some of these potbelly stores that hire people to play cover songs. I've been doing some of that, so I've been learning some mainstream stuff that I've avoided all my life, and some of it's pretty good. And then you can listen to Ramblin' Jack Elliott and get a lot of tunes that probably you didn't write. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Potbelly seems to be, uh, you know, it's a happening thing. I remember when there was one Potbelly uh, down on Lincoln Avenue in the old days. Now they're everywhere, and yeah. uh, there's plenty of people who get out there and play at those places. Do they uh, pay, you, pay you a fair wage? Do you they get tips? Pay, they pay. They pay, and there's tips, yeah. The one in Glen Ellen's real nice. There's a lot of kids come in, kids' baseball teams, and that's a nice little gig. I like it a lot. You know, I, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot of songs and stuff that I... You know, I thought, gee, I'd like to learn that sometime, but never got around to it, so. I would think um, that a guy like you had a lot of songs in his head. Now, you and I were talking about sometimes not, not remembering the details, because yeah. we have so many in details in our minds. Tons of songs <laughs> in my head, but not, not popular ones, you know. <laughs> so it's like, oh, back in the high life again. Like, I actually like that song a lot. It's like, and then I, I look up Steve Winwood and... I like this guy. I like him a lot. You know, it's all folk music. You know, Steve Winwood. He was in the Spencer Davis troupe or whatever it was called way back. Yeah, he was in that original Blind Faith. Whatever that's that's that song was that uh, the guy can sing. That's for sure. Uh, speaking of singing, what do you got for us? Uh, well, I thought I'd, I feel like playing this. Uh, what do you got three song called? Uh, Hard traveling. I sneak this in as a as a cover tune. Up and down that Lincoln Highway. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is. Uh, you know, of all the songs I've, I, I learned, a, a couple of them stand out as just being writing masterpieces. And I think this is one of them, Hard Traveling. I've been having some hard traveling, I thought you know. Rattlers, I thought you know. I've been riding them flat wheelers way down the road. I've been riding them blind passengers, dead enders, kicking up cinders. I've been having some hard traveling. I've been hitting that hard rock mine, and I thought you know. I've been leaning on a pressure drill way down the road. Hammer flying. Air hole sucking, six feet of mud, I sure been a muckin'. I've been having some hard traveling, Lord. I've been hitting some hard harvesting, I thought you know. North Dakota to Kansas City, way down the road. Cutting that 
to read, stacking that hay, trying to make about a dollar a day. I've been having some more traveling I've been working that Pittsburgh steel, I thought you know. I've been dumping that red hot slag way down the road. I've been blasting, I've been firing, I've been pouring red hot iron. I've been having some hard traveling. I've been laying in a hard rock jail, I thought you know. I've been laying out 90 days way down the road. Mean old judge, he said to me, 90 days for vagrancy. I've been having some hard traveling more. I've been walking that Lincoln Highway, I thought you know. I've been hitting that 66 way down the road. Heavy load and a worried mind, looking for a woman that's hard to find. I've been having some hard traveling more. I've been having some Yeehaw, boy, that's great. I love that tune. Yeah. So is that the song? There's one song that Woody does that he talks about the Lincoln Highway. And uh, I don't know if that's it or not, but uh, the Lincoln Highway was an, uh, an old highway, and it uh, may have gone along Route 66. I'm not sure. Just something that's uh, floating around in my head. Sometimes you don't remember things. Sometimes yeah. you remember little things without the details. Well, it goes by in that song, but he may have written another song specifically <laughs> about it. But yeah, <laughs> he just hits all these occupations, and, and you notice that uh, the same guy doing the hard rock mining is the, is the guy spending time in the hard rock jail, you know. <laughs> it, it's, uh, he's subtle, you know. So, uh, you know, we have a tradition. Uh, you, you and I are older. I'm older than you, but uh, I remember Folkways records, you know, and I could go into a lot of detail from Lead Belly on up, all these records I have. Uh, Cisco Houston, there was just a whole lot of uh, people that, and uh, folk music was a real part of things, and there was this great folk revival or uh, in the 60s, uh, and then uh, it seemed to go away, and I'm just wondering what the state of the folk music scene is. Do they still call you a folk singer? Uh, the shift was to singer-songwriter for a while. I'm not sure what the different uh, classifications are, but talk about folk music, or what do you call well, yourself? Well, when I was young, uh, folk singer seemed like this wimpy term, and I was a singer-songwriter, and at this point, being a singer-songwriter is, everybody's a singer-songwriter. You know, and in a shower for sure. <laughs> there's no connection to necessarily being a poet for being a singer-songwriter, but to me, a folk singer has become a very strong term. Like I'm very proud to be a folk singer because you have to earn it. You know, it's you have to learn a lot of history to sing folk songs well. I think, I think, I think they represent a lot of history and the kind of the emotional truth of history is in these old songs, and. Um, it's just infinitely deep to study this stuff, you know. I, I love spirituals and old ballads and the way people lived and the thought. It's it's very rich, and I think indigenous, you know, people always have these ancestor. They call it ancestor worship, which I think is a misnomer, but they have a way of connecting to ancestors and ancestor energy. And I think folk songs do that in a in a way that's important spiritually. Oh, that's a good answer. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. Folk music, folk singers, that's good. And I know one of the things that uh, you and I have connected on and uh, Facebook, and I gotta say, as much as I feel like enslaved to it, because I like sending out one of my photos most days, um, one of the things that you and I hooked up on were around questions of race and issues of that, and uh, certainly that's addressed in the music, and certainly we're living in a time when uh, we should be proud of what we accomplished in the last 50 years, or not as proud as we could be if we had done more, but we see an attack on uh, the advances that were made. Um, and folk music played a real part in, uh, in the civil rights movement and in the peace movement. It definitely did. It was, it was uh, if you get a, a, a sort of denial of reality culture going on, um, folk songs are a pretty good antidote to that. Um, do you do? Uh, I, I want to add something to what Dennis said about the war on drugs, and because people don't know, don't always draw the line to the end, the reason so many 
poor minority people are being incarcerated is so that they'll work for nothing. It's, it's to have them working cheap. And they harvest minority communities basically for slave labor. So if people are in, in prison for, you know, however long for, for some recreational drug possession, they're working for corporations. I mean, I met a guy in Glen Ellen and his, uh, his brother's been in jail for 20 years at, cause, uh, at a murder at which he was not present. And he's making, you know, clothing for Victoria's Secret, you know. No kidding. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of corporations that these uh, companies are farming out their labor. So all our jobs are not necessarily going overseas. So yeah, and there's um, a privatization that's how, that's of prisons how ugly now this too. This story is, you know, um, when you talk about poverty, you know, working full time for nothing is pretty much pretty much poverty. <laughs> what and kind they, of what kind of crowds do you get at uh, not just I'm um, not when you go to Potbelly, but when you do a concert or. Uh, do you, are there younger people who follow this stuff? I mean, we know that uh, I was actually really proud of one of my kids who put out a thing on, uh, on the 4th of July talking about what a great place we are with a lot of diversity. He said that after, he said, and we got to, you know, we got to still deal with all the fascist stuff. Yeah. And he talked about uh, there's a lot of things that are wrong. Now, uh, he was accused of listening too much to me on Facebook. Uh, but I, I've been around a lot of younger kids, and they're really conscious about yeah. a lot of stuff. I'm not sure. I did see an article the other day that said that it might swing back where this generation, the younger people, are going to become Republicans. I doubt it, but um, I just wonder what, you, what you're seeing when you play to an audience, not just at, uh, at a gig like where you have to do other people's songs, but when you're, yeah. you're in concert. Um, boy. I do a lot of, you know, how, when I tour, I do a lot of house concerts and living rooms and So they're already there. pretty I don't hip. Think, I don't think people are any different than they were, you know. Um, I'm getting a mind cramp here. This is okay, sing us a song. For me, sing us you, a song. You, you mentioned fascism. I did uh, mention fascism. I think uh, that word is not used enough. And uh, I, I often mention introducing <laughs> this song because it's about how fascism starts in neighborhoods and moves and... And the, the way you can stand up against it, you know, in the moment, in maybe in a neighborhood, even when you're a kid, you know, things like that. Um, so, when you're thinking about fascism, think about those people down on the border who are, are yelling at these kids who are, have, uh, you know, are escaping from all kind of uh, travesties. And uh, I just can't believe these people I'm seeing down that little town in California. Yeah. Well, this is a. Uh, song I wrote in my 20s, maybe 30 years ago, I wrote the song, and, uh, but I've been working on the music uh, <laughs> for most, most of the last two summers, literally, and uh, I've actually got this here to read because I haven't been able to memorize it. I think it's finally solidified as of about What's it called? yesterday. It's called Never Enough. Never Enough. Andrew Calhoun, and one of our faves. Uh, what if you're hearing that? Uh, that's rain. It's just pouring rain. Yeah, here, we got pouring here. rain here. It's not leaking. In the old days, it might have been, but uh, thank you, Tom Rosenfeld and the Heartland, for uh, fixing the roof and keeping it all going. And here comes Andrew Calhoun. Never enough. Never have. It is never enough. Glide on smooth water and make it rough. and berries up in the chimney live goblins and fairies out by the rock by the water running out by the rock by the lizard sunning I want to be free not another dull tragedy come with me I have seen the fields come with me I and 
size He said and he broke my chair And told me lies about the income tax And his other facts His coat was many fold His manner bleak and gay He stuttered easily And he rose and died away small in size and it spoke no truth and it told no lies and it spoke no words but two blackbirds flew out of its cape and trying to escape they banged the window pane Tip 
to bow, we were high and full, but we are sober now, we are sober now. Whatever I have, it is never enough. Glide on smooth water and make it rough. Own my own home and you think it's strange. Sit in my kitchen, wait for life. Andrew Calhoun. Andrew, you write books. Is that, was that a book you wrote? Was that a book you wrote about fascism that you were putting to music? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, I probably wrote those words in 45 minutes and spent 400 hours into learning to play it. But I think it's... Uh, Speaking of books, don't you have a new book out? I have a book called The Trilogy Trilogy, which is, uh, wouldn't have existed if not for Facebook, which brought out the worst to me. I resisted mm -hmm. getting on there, and someone talked me into getting on there for mm -hmm. business reasons. And after about a week, I went, this is so ridiculous. It always says, what are you doing? Well, you're sitting on your ass looking at your computer. That's all anybody is doing. What are you doing? That's <laughs> true. So, Although, you know, I tell you, by my computer, on the floor, I have a bunch of dumbbells. Yeah. I have one of those yoga balls, that I, uh, and I have a roller. So I, uh, I, I discipline myself to get off the chair and go into the next room and uh, stretch out. Because as you get older, yeah. you need to work your muscles. Yep. Uh, you know, one of the things that we talked about uh, you when you were coming on the show was Elizabeth Wenscott, who yeah. is a, a former Heartland worker and was a great Tai Chi teacher, just passed away. And we did talk about her a little bit on the show. You have a poem you wrote, and I, we don't have too much time. I don't know how yeah. long it is. It's uh, not too long, and I'd like to... Let's roll with it. Okay.